What is up my fellow gamers? In today's video, we got our best beginner's guide for the brand new mobile game, Monster Hunter. Now, like and subscribe for more amazing mobile game content. So I got a bunch of tips and tricks to go over for new players. First thing I wanna go over, because I've gotten this question asked a lot in previous other Niantic games, and that is how do you move Ooh. your character, right? You're just kind of sitting there. Well, the way this game works is it's based off of GPS, from your phone so the way you move your character is you just have to get up and move so what it means is you have to play this game by going out and walking around your town walking around your city my first suggestion is to find a weapon type that you like and focus on building out that specific type we take a look we have a bunch of different weapons we have sword and shield great sword long sword you also have the hammer the light bow gun and the bow now you're going to unlock additional weapons and gear as you go ahead and progress through these different campaign missions right here you'll see these quests these are your campaign quests and this as you go ahead and complete these chapters you'll get access to new different pieces of gear that you can go ahead and equip if you try to upgrade and forge everything you're gonna find out very quickly that it takes a lot of materials to try and level every single different piece up so that's my first suggestion is find out which one you particularly like for your play style and focus on upgrading that family because you're gonna see that for sword and shield we've got a bunch of different ones now I would go ahead and I would upgrade the different elements because you're gonna have to be switching between those different elements depending on the monsters you face you always want to try and match up the elemental bonus so that way you do more damage and the reason behind this is even though the different gear pieces can have uh, specific requirements for them, you'll notice that they require very specific materials from very specific monsters, but then there are also generic materials. And that's where you're gonna run into the problem is those generic materials. If you're trying to upgrade everything, you're gonna run out of generic things like the iron ore or even like the claws and stuff like that very, very fast. Aside from the stuff that is like specific monster materials, aside from new weapons and gear that will become available as you complete these chapter quests, you're also going to gain access to higher rarity monsters as well as new monsters in general. So when you first start off, you're gonna see a lot of the same monsters popping up. If we go to our monster guide, the large monster types, yours is gonna be very limited. You're only gonna see maybe like the same two or three monsters recycled over and over and over again in the world. But as you complete those chapter quests, then you're gonna unlock more monsters and then your large monster guide, it'll really start to fill up. And then you'll see a more wide variety of different monsters out in your town when you're walking around. As well as the higher rarity, you'll start to see like the two stars, the three stars. The other thing we gotta talk about is the different zones. If we take a look in the top left corner you'll see right now I am in the swamp zone we actually click where it says swamp we can take a look at the different types of zones and which monsters and items will go ahead and appear in those specific zones so if we take a look at the forest you'll see that these are the specific monsters that you can find when you are in forest areas now they are going to have an instance where some of these chapter missions are going to ask you to destroy a certain amount of monsters and it's pretty simple, but then you're gonna get ones that ask you to collect a very specific material. And it's going to say that, oh, it's only found in the forest zone. All you gotta do is walk around forest zones and those items will just randomly pop up and then your Palico will go ahead and collect it. And now paintballs is a really important feature that we need to talk about. So we can go ahead and we can mark enemies that we wanna maybe later play when we are home. Maybe we'll say we're out and about, we're doing whatever, we're grocery shopping or something. And we can have it set up so that it will automatically go ahead and put paintballs on monsters even if we do not have the game open up. Now we do need to go into our settings and turn on one very important feature. So we're gonna click our little character avatar in the bottom left. We're gonna go to settings and then right where it says Adventure Sync. Tracks location while app is closed, used for Palico bag and Palico paint balls. So as long as you make sure you have that checked off, your Palico can go ahead and collect items even if you do not have the game open and it will also go ahead and do random paint balls on monsters that just happen to be nearby. The only downside to this is currently there is no way to kind of customize it. 
So it's just gonna randomly go ahead and paintball any monster that it just kind of kind of comes in contact with. So you may end up paintballing level one rarities, level two rarities. I really think they need a feature for that, which would be nice to like have it set up so it only puts paintballs on whatever specific level rarity you are looking for. Also make sure you go ahead and put 60 FPS while hunting, make sure that is checked. Now a cool thing that they recently just added to this game is when you would go ahead and use one of your paintballs on a monster, it would actually make the monster completely disappear. So it was a way for you to kind of snipe monsters, rare monsters away from other players. However, now they made it so that even if you paintball a monster, it does not just disappear from the map. It still stays on the map. When you do get to those higher rarity monsters, you really want to do those hunt with nearby hunters. You want to play with other friends who are kind of nearby. That way it's just so much easier to take down those higher rarity monsters because um, they basically are just big bullet sponges that just soak up a crazy amount of damage. The more friends you have helping you, the easier and faster it will be. Now, I don't know what the exact limit is to how many hunters can do like a hunt together because I haven't had anybody nearby to really do the hunt with. I've always had to do solo. So the game is definitely possible to play by yourself. So even if you don't have friends, don't worry about that. But what you could do with the paintball feature is a lot of people will use paintballs and then you can go home and then if your friends come over, you can actually use your friends to help you take down monsters that you used paintballs on earlier in the day when you were out. We take a look really quick at the weapons and we look at the stat that says affinity. As far as I know, I believe the affinity has to do with crit rate. If we take a look at the equipped skill, you'll see at grade two, it says critical eye. And if we click on it, it just says increases affinity by 10%. It's a really good idea to make sure you know what its weak points are. If we click on the little eye icon in that top right corner. It'll give us a quick breakdown of this monster. And you wanna look for breakable parts. And you want to try and focus on attacking those specific breakable parts. It's not only going to make the enemy pretty much immobilized and kind of like stunned, but it's also going to give you extra drops as well. Now there's going to be another quest that's going to say, do a perfect dodge. So I'm going to go over that right now in this battle. Now perfect dodge means you're going to see the icon of like this goldness come up around your character. So we have to time it properly and that one I did it a little too early but the monster glows red right before he does his attack now you don't want to dodge right at the red you want to you kind of have to wait because he doesn't do it right after the red each monster is kind of slightly different in their attacks so right there you see how it just went gold and I, my character kind of slid and then after you do one of those perfect dodges if you do an attack after, you'll see we do like extra damage. You'll have that gold glowiness around you after you just did it. So it's like a stronger attack as well. As far as rewards, two times X, 300 gems is what it costs. Uh, it's kind of up to you, but I really haven't found like the best use for your gems, honestly, because there's really not a lot of ways to use your gems. The other thing you want to be careful about when you're doing your battles is don't just like spam the attack. Because if you spam the attack, especially with some of the weapons that are really slow, like the swords and the hammers and stuff, it's going to kind of put it in the system that it's going to trigger another attack, even though the animation is slower than your finger. So if you kind of spam like three, it's three taps on the screen, your character is going to get stuck in this loop. And then once the enemy goes ahead and tries to do an attack, you won't even be able to dodge as you click the screen too many times. That's a huge, huge gameplay mistake that you can kind of make when you're doing battles. The other thing is, as we are in our battle, you'll notice that if I go ahead and I tilt my screen, it goes ahead and it completely like moves the screen. This is like the AR mode. And if we click on that top right corner, that's how you can kind of turn it on and off. Um, that feature is also turned on though. However, when you are using certain weapons, like if you're using one of these iron bows or any bow in general, you can use that to aim, but you don't necessarily even need to really aim. I mean, because even if you're like aim is like away from the monster, it still ends up typically hitting the monster. 
but what you can do with the aim is to aim at certain body parts so that way you can go ahead and break them on the enemy that is it i'm also going to do two more additional videos where i'm going to go over all the different weapons and all of the different armors make sure you subscribe for those videos so you don't miss them turn on the notification bell and i'll see you guys and girls later i hope you enjoyed the video peace uh